sunglasses, right? <laughs> Good. Okay, we ready to rock and roll? Excellent. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, hope everyone's had a great day. It's been a fun first day at the summit. Um, my name is David Safai. I'm the CEO of Trilio Data. And I've got the honor of moderating this panel uh, of cloud experts. Uh, we're going to have a, a fun discussion. Uh, you'll note that none of these folks are shy at all. <laughs> so uh, before we dive into this, you know, a couple of quick thoughts. I'm sure many of you are, are cloud purists, and some of you started your journey with OpenStack thinking that the world will be stateless. So can I get a quick show of hands from the crowd? When you first started your OpenStack journey, did you believe that all your workloads would be stateless? Anyone? A couple of people. OK. <laughs> Let me ask you a question now. Where you are today and stateful has become important and part of your business. Um, backup come to mind? Backup comes to mind today versus before? Are people thinking about backup? I mean, it's a pretty full crowd. I I'd assume so. But I assume it's becoming an important everyday conversation that we're here for this day two conversation, right? So um, what I'd like to do, I'll introduce my fellow colleagues here, and then we'll, we'll dive right in. Uh, at the end, we have uh, Michele Bello, a cloud engineer with CSA Piemonte. Uh, Michele, like many of you, is going through a process of, of transformation and a metamorphosis of his cloud. Uh, and he provides cloud services and deploys for the Italian government. Also next to him, we have Stefan Kroll. Stefan's a longtime OpenStack operator. Uh, he architects, deploys, and manages infrastructure and key elements of OpenStack within Volkswagen Financial Services. And lastly, uh, we have Sean Cohen. Uh, some of you may know Sean. Sean's been here for Sean's year 11th summit. So, yeah. Wow, excellent. <laughs> Seasoned veteran. Sean has 15 years of experience in senior product management and the delivery of pro private clouds in the enterprise market. He drives the enterprise cloud infrastructure product management strategy for Red Hat OpenStack cloud offering. And again, my name is David Safai, and I'll be taking you through uh, today's journey. So, Michele, let's, let's, let's start, with, we'll start with you here. What? Um, Talk to us about your, your background and your experience with okay. OpenStack and why you're part of this conversation today. Okay. Hi, everyone, and thank you to David for giving the opportunity to talk this panel about our cloud infrastructure, new cloud infrastructure based on, on OpenStack community, meet Okata, and how we solve the problem of backup, of backup and data, data protection on our legacy workloads. My name, as, I said, as David said, is Michele Bello, and I am a cloud engineer at CSI Piemonte. Unfortunately, this is not a CSI you have probably thought of the body in the hall, but CSI stands in Italian for Consortium for per il Sistema Informativo. That in English can sound like something, something like Consortium for Information Technology. Uh, CSI in Piemonte because we are located in the northwest, in the north, in the northwest region of Italy called Piemonte. What we do? Well, we, 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 de we, de we develop and implement uh, service, information technology services for public administration, like uh, hospitals, like uh, municipalities, like uh, local health agencies, and many other public authorization. Something about me, I am, uh, I developed, I dealt with virtual infrastructure since 2005, ranging from pure virtualization, big, big physical to virtual migration, to the cloud infrastructure. In fact, in 2011, CSI implemented its first cloud infrastructure based on, on, on VMware vCloud Director. But after some years, after, after five, six years, our business management asked us to implement something new, to implement something that is, was different from, from the past. In fact, they asked us to implement a new cloud infrastructure where to migrate our legacy workloads, about 1,030 virtual machines, so we have a very big virtual machine to migrate, in something new, in something new with new requirements. The requirement has to be 
software defined as a center has to be as not to have no vendor lock-in, as to have full API RESTful, and that to have multi-regions. And so is why we choose OpenStack as our solution. Um, in fact, um, two years ago, a new project called Nivola was born. This project, in fact, uh, is, is ambition project, first, first of all, because we, uh, he, 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 he would like it. We, we would like to deliver business services, like platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, in a simplified manner to our end user. In fact, we, we want like, to, to hide the real complexity of the system to the user. And that's what we have developed. We developed a CMP based on, the, uh, on with, with, with Python that integrates via REST API all the infrastructure on the, on the bottom of the, of, of the system. In fact, we have OpenStack, we have Sphere, we have Trillio, we have Vim, we have NC Square Storage, and so on, local, global, global load balancing, and so on. This is why we want to give to our end user a simplified way, a simplified model, a user portal that uh, in a single pane of glass. So it's what we do and what we would like to do in a short <laughs> experience. Stefan, why don't you provide us with some of your background? Yeah, my, my name is Stefan, as uh, David just said. Um, yeah, my background is I'm also a former um, security network architect the last decade, and now we are facing some challenges um, in cloud context. That means um, one of the biggest use cases for our cloud solution is uh, transforming legacy applications. Um, migrating it, but in most cases we should transform it. Um, because we, are, we have only a few percentage of cloud native applications or even cloud ready applications, and most of, um, of our applications, we have hundreds of applications are legacy stuff, monolith stuff. So we have to deal with that. So um, there, and there's, a, there's a funny story. Um, last year I was at the OpenStack Summit in Boston, uh, so it was my first year in cloud business. And I don't care at all about back up the cloud stuff because um, everything should be shiny and um, cloud native and stuff, so I don't care about it. And one year later, I'm sitting here. <laughs> so, that, so, so we have to talk about it. So, uh, and uh, the reality looks completely different. So that's one. Uh, that's the biggest challenge for us to have the shiny way. It's, it's nice, but we have to deal with the reality first, and then, yeah, take some time, and then maybe in some years we are cloud native at all. But Nirvana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to reality. <laughs> right. Right. Well, thanks. Thanks for joining us. In. in Sean, thanks, thank you for joining us, uh, and congratulations on the transaction as well. So here, he's referring to the blue elephant in the room. So. Thank you. It's okay, you can talk about I it. I think it's a great <laughs> testimony for open source, right, um, and uh, uh, the Reddit way of, of being open. Uh, I've been working with this community for the last five years. In fact, some of the blogs I've read over the years actually address the same principles we talked today, and even the one that goes back to 2013 talks about the need for hybrid cloud and how we back up hybrid cloud because that's going to be a thing. And guess what here, 2018, it's here. <laughs> so I think the main thing I want you to take away from this is you live this room that you are in the cloud business, right? And you have a reputation to maintain. You have to SLA to your customers, and the worst thing that can happen, it, it can happen to you too. Um, and that's the biggest thing. I think you know, I totally share uh, Stefan's uh, uh, um, uh, basically understandings and, and realization. Uh, we have a, being Red Hat, uh, we're the largest dis distribution of OpenStack. Yes, yeah? so we serve hundreds of thousands of customers in production, right? And guess what? This was in day one. So one of the mm -hmm. things you asked me in the beginning was like, was this like an afterthought because we designed OpenStack to be cloud native, basically the open source AWS, right? So. I don't think so. I think we, this was actually in our original design. I mean, uh, the, if you look at Cinder, uh, Cinder Backup as a service was introduced in Grizzly. Yeah. Right? So, uh, and then over the years, we extended it, and we had this <laughs> new replication because you need data protection across site as well, right? So it's not enough to have a backup from your block level. And then in, uh, somewhere around Mitaka, we introduced even the concept of backing up from your Cinder workloads into a hybrid cloud. The first example was, was Google Cloud Storage. So you can actually do today backup across cloud. So this is something that was already on our plate, but I want to
go back to what you said. Uh, the digital transformation is a journey, right? And for some of our customers, I'll give you two examples. Mm. Uh, uh, we have served both enterprise and telcos. Uh, having a backup or a, a data protection plan is not luxury. It's a must have for many reasons, right? Uh, this is like, you cannot, it's part of your SLA and it's part of your adding the re reputation, right? Because things can go south. Oh yeah, they can go, they can go south very fast. All right, so. No, no, I mean, it, it, so you dovetail right into, into our slide pretty well because, you know, we, we talk about backup and redefining what backup is, right? For, in our eyes, it's not just anyone can replicate your cinder volume. That's fine. That's just the data itself. But we think about moments in time, right? And there's a lot more to backup that also includes configurations and everything from a, on a per tenant basis, right? So as you start thinking about one, how do I back up? And you may start with scripts. That's kind of a good luck to you when, when you want to scale your environment. But also when you start talking about, I think part of the conversation which is important is recovery. Right? Backup is one thing, but speed of recovery is, is really critical. And I think we can touch on that later on. So you know, if, unless you've got a, a, a solution that's automated, mm -hmm. it's sort of a, we joke around, it's a wing and a prayer. Right? Then you think about recovering 500, or a thousand tenants, right? All individuals here. So my my first question to the panel is, is why, right? Why? Uh, why do you need data protection? In fact, why have you chosen OpenStack for serving stateful workloads against OpenStack's original mindset? Right. This is kind of counterproductive, right? But 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 why? And um, you know, Sean, let's. How do you guys want to begin? Dive right in. Seriously. So. As I just mentioned, so um, not everything is cloud native just like with uh, finger snap. So we are a very big company with hundreds of applications. Yeah. And just because we have our cloud now productive, it's not changing anything. So, so we have to care about the application we currently got. And mostly it's 90%. It's legacy stuff. So we want to have the benefits of the cloud. And uh, yeah, we want to use it because for all the fancy reasons, but we have to deal with the regulations as Son said. We have regulations, we have compliance, we have security, we have data, we have the GDPR, we have to know where our backups are, and we, have, we should have some backups. And uh, yeah, that's why we, we, don't, don't, we don't talk about cloud native stuff, actually we talk about backup for our uh, legacy applications on our cloud. That's uh, very important. So I, I think, Sean, I, I want to hear what you have to say about this, but I'm curious again, I want to go back to the, to the crowd. For folks out there, uh, show of hands where compliance or regulations are driving you to make decisions. Folks? Yeah. I mean, it's, it was driving you guys, right? <laughs> so I, I can add more color, probably. So I mentioned the two footprints, right? And it's not a coincidence. We have a public sector and finance uh, uh, institute sitting on stage with me. So I'm going to try to represent the rest of the, the se segments, <laughs> right? Uh, they're not all uh, enterprise class. They're, they're, we have telco. So if you look at telco, you mentioned compliance. Yeah. Uh, here in Europe, we have something called ANSI. Uh, there's ETSI. There's uh, uh, telco compliance grade you need to meet. This is not a nice to have. You have to meet. You have to have data encryption. You have data integrity. This is uh, I'm not even talking about where you need to and how long you need to keep the data. If you look at financial customers like large banks and uh, banking institutes, sometimes the, uh, the, the they need to keep the data on a, uh, somewhere else, right? Additional site, not on site, for at mm. least seven years. Uh, I'm not sure what, what you're seeing in your end. Is it like seven or more? more? Up to 10. Up to 10 yeah. years, right? So, yeah. hmm, I need to have backup because I need to restore things fast, but I also need to keep the backup because guess what? You have regulation coming up. And you mentioned GDPR. How many of you have heard that buzzword before? So we're sitting in Europe. Uh, this is the largest uh, uh, regulation that was enforced uh, just over a year ago, which is General Data Protection Regulation in Europe, uh, which is the largest law, uh, new law in, in starting 1995. And it, it forces everyone in this industry <laughs> uh, that provide cloud services as well to align with this regulation. So this is not a nice to have for yeah. a lot of segments, right? So well, this is the global impact actually, yeah. talk about GDPR, it bleeds, it's, it's a 
global initiative and phenomena. I know it's forcing other ge geographies to think that same way. I, and I believe in, in California, right, one of the largest economies in the world, mm -hmm. is now starting to adopt and they're looking at policies very similar to GDPR. Yeah. And, and I'm sorry, you brought up California, and my thoughts goes directly to the disaster now with all the fires taking place, right? Yeah. So there's natural disasters, but ah, it's not just about natural disaster. I will come to you, right? So the floods uh, are one thing, hurricane is one thing, but I say that your worst nightmare is you. You're sitting in this room, right? And human errors is probably the number one thing that brings our cloud down, right? Uh, if it happened to Amazon, it can happen to you. You managing your private or public cloud using OpenStack. It only takes one script or command line to bring five regions and X number of customers down for five hours, right? That's what it takes. And the question you need to ask yourself, how fast can I restore operation? Because this is where the phone's gonna get the call. You get all the calls, beepers, whatever you want, right? This is where things basically hit the fan. So don't think it cannot happen to you, I mentioned that before, yeah. is think what do I need to do in order to avoid it? And how can I maintain that service uh, today, right? It's not just about I need to protect the workloads. I need to protect my business, <laughs> right? And today my business is operated by cloud. That's what it's all about. So, so let, let's actually touch on some real life lessons here. Um, now when you, once you have a, a data protection solution in place, you have point in time copies. You know, uh, Michaela, you could talk to us about your experience yeah. uh, in leveraging data protection, but also leveraging data protection for other uh, initiatives that you may have in internally, Chris. There's a lot more you can do with a point in time, right? In fact, in the previous interview of CERN, you described a scenario of nightmare scenario. In fact, yeah. <laughs> we. One of these nightmares come true for us because two years ago we had a disaster on our previous cloud. In fact, we have a disaster on some instance some virtual machine. We lose some virtual machine. We have problem in some virtual, some virtual machine, but not in other one. Mm. So when we, it, it was a very, very bad situation. And I, I, I don't want to be again in this situation because it's, it's not very comfortable to be in this, this situation. Hopefully you're coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so we designed our new cloud infrastructure with uh, workloads migration, workloads migration, sorry, workloads migration, because we have three regions. So we have decided to, we have decided to project, to design a solution that can be easy to migrate workloads from one cloud to another one. Mm. For any reason, you, you starting from management, starting from um, and to the, problem of a disaster recovery scenario where not, not all your cloud, your cloud goes down. So, uh, you know, our main application are fundamental three-tier application, legacy, work, work, legacy workload, three-tier application, old system, operative system. Sometimes we have a big database on mm -hmm. the same virtual machine, on the same application server, on the same web server, and so <laughs> it's not cloud native. So we, 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 we must have something different, something that can protect us from a disaster in this case. In fact, um, we have designed so this, 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 this solution. And um, well, just one thing. This solution is not a live migration. It's a cold migration. Mm -hmm. Because we have three different clouds. We, have, we, we don't have one of the OpenStack installation with three different regions, but we have three different OpenStack installation, installation that don't share any component each other. Mm -hmm. So we have three different OpenStack with one region in each. So we can use SYN replication, storage replication, or something like that. We must use something else that make this work for us. And we found that data protection can help us to achieve this requirement. In fact, I, 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 saw in, I, I show in this, in this, in this, this slide a four-step four process. First, we have to decide what migration, what workload to migrate. Then we have to back up the migration. Third, we have to replicate data from one side to another side. Then we have to import the mm -hmm. data in this new cloud and then restore the data. So it's not something easy to do, it's not something that can, can, can be do in live event. We have, to, we, have to, we have to do this thing in a cold process. 
And so that we have think to our production for. So what, what you're showing, right, you, you may be, we're talking about migration here, but really you have a semblance of a, of a DR scenario for yourself, right? Yeah. Even if there were two separate sites, you can end up moving copies over through Cinder application, and you always have the ability to spin up a new cloud. So what, so what are some important uh, items uh, within this environment for you, as far as a, a DR or a backup solution? With the Nodab agentless, because uh, if for a good solution to work in this case, we don't have any agent aboard an instance. Mm -hmm. We don't want to, uh, to manage agent distribution mm -hmm. On something like that, then if you, if, if we were as we, we had in, the, in the, our last cloud, in data protection solution, the DTN agent, the admin of the instance can remove the, the agent, can stop the services, can uh, disable the network interface, and then you have to manage calls like uh, why doesn't work, why your backup doesn't work anymore. So to be uh, to, so we, we, ha we, we need to have a solution that is agentless. So it sounds like agentless and I guess really non-disruptive yeah. uh, for, your, for your environment, kind of, sort of key elements. Um, so with that said, uh, you know, Stefan, I look at you here. What does the in industry need as far as a data protection solution? We've heard agentless and non-disruptiveness I think are really important to to Michele here, but what about yourself? Now, from my from my perspective, it's uh, uh, our current status. It's very yeah, comfy for our customers to have a very easy to use uh, maybe GUI or CLI, mm. so that they guys who maybe using backup and restore scenarios or a service the first time could use it very easily. Because a lot of guys using the cloud managing their their stuff, but they uh, did not handle backup and restore in the past because we have dedicated um, sub-departments for backup restore, Linux, firewall and stuff and now they should cover all the stuff themselves. So it makes sense to have it as easy as possible with examples, with templates and maybe click and make everything very fancy and easy. Yeah. It's very important for us to maybe introduce the guys to, to backup and restore and especially inform them what are the, what are the reasons to do so and maybe give them some examples to okay, there are some procedures how to back up and you are safe um, as well. Um, from, from compliance regulations perspective, it makes sense um, to have kind of uh, compliance rules. That means the, our customers can do whatever they want. Everything is compliant and everything not compliant is forbidden or is avoided by the yeah. administrators of the, uh, of the service solution. That um, is a second good fact, I guess. So backup is put in the hands of your tenants. Yeah. So you, you empower your tenants to do their own? Yeah, normally it should be complete self-service, but they should be safe that we are not investigating on some stuff they did, but they should do everything and then they are completely compliant from, mm. for example, regulation by European Central Bank. So they, if they prove us, they could say, okay, they could do whatever they want, but they are compliant. Backup is a different location. Yeah. They back up, I don't know, every day, every minute, no matter what. And um, yeah, maybe the last thing is what, what Michele just said is uh, maybe in the future a topic for us is if you once back up your solution, you can easily uh, restore it in a complete different location in case of worst, worst scenario. It means BCM, so business continuity management. Everything go, awesome, go up in flames and then you have to restore your very, very important applications in a different location. Easy. As the same way you easily back up, you should easily restore the stuff because as fast maybe, as possible. maybe that's, that's a nightmare <laughs> from the past. You know, everything is easy to back up, and once you have to restore it, it's okay, it takes two weeks. Right. A have fun. <laughs> yeah. That's one maybe experience from the past. Right? In fact, my old boss usually said every, every data protection can make a backup, just a few can make a restore. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you can restore it. Yeah. <laughs> So, so the rest of yeah, the world here. I'll, I'll just add a bit more color. I want to go back to what Stefan said about it. easy, uh, ease of use and the tenant, 
doing their own backups as well as a service. Now, OpenStack is all about open services and everything as a service, basically. Now, we don't have a backup as a service, service in OpenStack. Let's put the, that elephant on the table, right? So we have APIs you can call up, you can write scripts. But going back to Stefan said, from an operator perspective, I do want to be able to put that plan into action and schedule it. And as you said, Sometimes you have a maintenance window. Some of our like big telco customers, they have a very serious windows that they're limited to do maintenance on, right? That should be part of your day two operations. Your backup plan should be automated, right? This is not something you want to do manually. You want it automated, you want to test it, you want to run it. And, and again, even that migration process, which is painful because you need to have stand up hardware for that and it's cost for the organization. Yes, don't do it every day, but do it at least one, uh, every three months, right? But, so otherwise, you'll find yourself again in the same place. Uh, so the ease of use, and it has to be automated. And I want to talk about the cloud tenants. Our cloud tenants is not just the cloud as we know today. I mean, to, you heard the keynotes in the morning. Uh, we're talking about open infrastructure, Kubernetes, open, open stack. I'm pretty sure you're going to bring up the container question soon. Um, <laughs> if I'm a developer using Kubernetes, I have a news item for you, right? I don't care about infrastructure. I expect it to work, right? So when we go to data protection, that's my expectation. Don't even give me the backup as a service like options. <laughs> I just expect it to work, right? And we're going to see more of that coming up into the nature of the base. So it's not just have to be automated, that's, that's key, but it has to be transparent and it has to be there, right? So, and as I said, when we look at backup, it's not just the infrastructure, right? Especially if you're running container, if you're running Kubernetes and OpenStack. Guess what? I need to protect Kubernetes, I have data, persistent storage, persistent data. I need to take care of that. I have all my infrastructure. Hmm. I need, and I have the control plane, right? OpenStack runs somewhere. I mean, we have all of these controllers and, you know, compute nodes and services and state of the services. Your backup, if you do talk to the R, you need basically all of the layers backed up, right? Yeah. As a consistency point of recovery. So it's not trivial, but the expectation from our end user is like, I don't care, it, it should work, right? And I expect you to deliver services. There's two words that are always in the data protection talk, come on up, right? RPO and RTO. Our goal, shrink it down as possible so I can restore it as possible so I limit the, down, the downtime and the disruption of my business, right? We would like to be in the disruption technology end rather than be disrupted. Uh, protect the world. That's fine, fine by <laughs> <Yeah>. me. <laughs> well, so Sean, we're, we're diving into what about containers? So again, quick show of hands. How many people are playing with containers right now in some way, shape, or form? Right? You're all dabbling, and, and I'm sure you know, we chuckle. This is kind of like OpenStack you know, a number of years ago. You think they're cattle, but uh, you're seeing Stateful find its way in all over the place, whether it's databases, uh, et cetera. I mean, you guys want to touch on, on, on the, the world of containers? Because I mean, are you guys looking at it today? So I can tell you, Sean, you're probably seeing this all from your, a lot of your customers. Yep. You want to go first? Well, I, I try. <laughs> <laughs> now, my very limited experience with containers is actually that we saw some, let's call it creepy applications running on our cloud. So they, there are some applications running in containers, and, and it looks like some software company put the applications into a box and a Christmas present, and once you open it up, you see the same, let's call it challenging application again. So there's no magic happens, so you have to take care about backup the, the, the same way. Nicely packaged. Yeah, yeah, nicely packaged, but you have to you have to take care about backup the same way like before. So this is normal it was a legacy application put into a container, put it on a cloud and there's no magic. So if you uh, an analysis this application, you see, okay, this application needs backup the same way like 10 years before. So there's no, no secret behind it. So we have to uh, uh, investigate on that and we have the same uh, solution for that like for yeah, other applications. So I mentioned the digital transformation journey, right? If you look at different se segments or verticals, uh, I go back to the telco. Um, Telco basically have going through this transition, right? Yes, there are some cloud-native containerized workload, VNFs, 
that can actually now start to tackle things like 5G, which is mm. great because we're going there. However, there's a, a whole lot of sets of virtual functions, not even virtual yet. Some of them are just boxes that needs to go to virtual as in containers. Some of them will be like maybe bare metal use cases. Uh, um, but it takes a long of time. When I talk to my customers, some of them will take five years to complete this journey. So it means that they still need to, as, as have the orchestration and the new orchestration of the things. So they really like mm -hmm. Kubernetes because that's how we want to go. But they also still need to drive this use case that you just mentioned. And what I've seen is like, I don't want to mention the big names of our telco customers, but some of them are basically taking the old legacy workload uh, in a container running in a VM, yeah. which is basically the same thing. And it's just like he said, you open that Christmas box and it's the same thing. I need to still do the same things to back it up and recover. Right? But they're treating these containers as lightweight VMs. Yes. So that's one side of the coin, which is how do we deal with the traditional and legacy. The yeah. other side of this coin, as I mentioned, this is the future, right? 5G is driving. There's all the new use cases, augmented reality, uh, smart cities. By the way, next week here on the same stage, we're going to have a smart country conference, right? So everything is getting smarter. <laughs> now, while we get smarter, we still also need to support our workloads. But how do we deal with data protection in Kubernetes? So obviously we have the registry, we have the persistent data, and so on. But the living data is the same principle, right? Kubernetes has snapshots. Uh, you can actually run a snapshot today. That's a I call it backup for the course, right? So <laughs> for, for you have the data protection. But what's missing is the things that you mentioned, right? How can we expose it to the developer, which doesn't care about the infrastructure, right. uh, to make it seamlessly? How can you expose it to uh, 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 ISVs in the backup industry to actually automate it. So someone needs to take that snapshot, uh, uh, basically expose it, bind it to the workload, right? Use it as a way to recover. We need you guys to automate it so it will be the same thing. Easy button. Right? Yeah, easy button. Now, as I mentioned, it's Kubernetes running in OpenStack. Obviously, Kubernetes can run in any cloud, guys. Public cloud and private cloud. But here we are in OpenStack, it's majority I, in the room probably are private clouds running OpenStack, right? You're going to run Kubernetes if you want it or not, right? But you're going to be asking the same questions and the same practices will apply. The good news, not a lot of change, right? In terms of the requirements, pretty much the same requirements. Definition of insanity, right? We're seeing yep. this thing over and over and over again. Okay, so, uh, you know, We've heard the importance of agentless, non-disruptiveness, empowering the tenants, making it easy for them to, to manage their own backup environments. Uh, we've heard how containers are following the same path that OpenStack uh, blazed before. So let's, let's kind of open, I'm gonna open up to the, to the crowd. Uh, questions out in the crowd? You've got great panelists here. Uh, anyone, anyone? Yes, sir. Use the microphone if you can. Yeah. Okay, more than a question, it's a suggestion. Uh, when you think about backup, okay, but for operations, it's more than backup. It's a data recovery solution. So please create the environment and restore the backup and assure that it works. If you can automate everything together, it's fantastic. Automatic re recovery. <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, to the point I made earlier before, it's not just the data, right? It's the metadata as well, and, and doing that on a per tenant basis, basis is a very tough, tough thing to do. Right? And, and one thing, like I want to relate to, is like when you do the restore, it's not the same, right? He's, this guy is doing data migration to another site. You know what's the IP address on the other side? Different, right? <laughs> when is the security on the other side? Different. You know what's the availability zone on the other side? Different. Yeah. So when you automate it, it has to apply the changes to your target site, right? So it, this is, they're not one-to-one. -one. Yeah. Any other questions? Wow, we answered everything for you guys. <laughs> An amazing panel. <laughs> well, so I guess the key takeaways here for everyone is back up everything, whether it's your OpenStack or your container environment. Uh, Please uh, rate this conversation. And if you want to continue this conversation, you can either take it online, we have the hashtag here, uh, or we can take it offline in the back. We are, we're all available and, and uh, we'd love to answer any more questions you may have. So thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of the summit. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. <laughs>